I did not go to um, regular kindergarten, I went to private school, and I didn't go into any kind of childcare until I was four years old. Um, small and gracious, so my mom could monitor the diet and made sure that they also monitored it so I wasn't fed the wrong foods. And then she would go up to the teacher in elementary school individually and tell them about my PKU because they sat with us at the table to make sure I didn't cheat. And then starting in sixth grade, um, back in the 80s you have the six periods so you don't have one teacher anymore. So that's when I started cheating up until I was 37, which was about six years ago. So it was very easy. Of course, I didn't have anybody monitoring me. And um, I, Taco Bueno, I had pizza, I had burgers, I had wing stop, I had wings, I had cheese. Um, also, I mean, just cheated pretty much longer than I was on regular diet. And it, um, school was very hard. I had math tutors my senior year and then also in junior college to pass an equivalent college algebra class. And I was moody, I <laughs> was fidgety, I daydreamed, I would get distracted very easily. Um, it took me seven years to get through college because school was so hard and luckily my parents did make me work because they knew it was hard for me during the school year or during the school semesters in college. Um, gosh. I would subject switch, I'd be talking about one subject mid-sentence and then switch to a different subject and have the looks from my friends and family, wait a minute, where you, you were just talking about this. So that was very um, hard to see the reaction of their faces when I was subject switching. Um, just moody and just kind of all over the place in my head. Torturous nightmares, I mean just really horrible ones no one wants to have or, or have described to. again need to be a support and listen to them because they're going to have the interaction with the kids at school that it's going to be harsh. Um, they're not going to understand and so helping them be able to cope and understand how to deal with that. So the parents, it's hard not to get on them because they don't want them to have any kind of mental issues or brain development issues especially later on in life but um, I mean I would say even working with them on, because I don't like cooking. Um, I like the microwave, I have no desire if I can't eat half the foods that other people are eating, what's the point of cooking? So I would say to be able to cook with them and make the formula with them and um, I would say even taste it. My dad did that and it helped out for him to understand where I was coming from and just kind of bear with me. This is you know, not the best um, formula, the foods aren't always the best, but um, sorry I'm kind of wondering, but just Try to get them to follow diet, but be supportive, be patient, be involved, work with them, um, try to understand where they're coming from. And then get involved in support groups as a parent as well as, as teens. There's enough of them out there now um, that they can do, um, go to these groups or have events around the city or the county where they live, which has been helpful for me in the last couple of years as well. It's just not worth cheating. I mean, it's not. If I can get that across, I mean, I've dumped the milk down the drain. I've hid the food, the Cheeto bags and chip bags behind the stereo and got busted when I was a teenager. It's just, it's not worth it because it messes with you mentally even when you're my age at 42 years old. So memory issues are a frustration, big time. And I feel like sometimes I'm not as smart as I used to be. So I feel like as I get older, I'm getting a little bit dumber, <laughs> which is, um, which is hard to feel and hard to say. It's, it's frustrating. I did it to myself. Um, I wish I'd have known a little bit more what, what was going to cause, what was going to happen if I cheated for so long, but that's the main thing. It's not worth cheating. I don't care what age you are. <laughs>